Hi everyone. Hi, I'm Tanya. Uh, I'm Tanya Janka. I am your host of the OWASP Dev Slap show. And with me in this super special Microsoft Ignite the Tour edition is Amy Boyd. Hi everyone. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about machine learning and security and how that's important. But first, I want Amy to tell you a little bit about herself. Okay, so yeah, hi everyone. My name's Amy Boyd. I am a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. Uh, I specialize in machine learning and AI, so artificial intelligence. That is kind of my background, anything data related. Um, and yeah, I, I speak at conferences, produce online content, and basically share as much as possible with the data science community normally. So it's great to meet you all, slightly different uh, set of people than I normally speak to. So yeah, we're excited to be here, thank you. Cool, so we were having lunch together and then I was asking security questions about AI and ML. And then I was like, what if you just came on the show? And then surprisingly, she said, it's, so it turns out if you just ask people really nicely that they say yes a lot. That's and true. This, this is going very <laughs> well for me. So um, so I saw a talk in Israel at AppSec IL by, I can't remember his name. He was amazing though. And he was saying that the main, so the main things that hackers try to do to machine learning uh, systems is not actually what the business is worried about very often so they'll do things like I don't know like try to steal a tiny amount of data or disrupt the system but he was saying that the thing that the business is most concerned about is like losing the model yeah yeah I was gonna say I mean the model is all of the intelligence all of the training all of the architecture that you have of that machine learning sort of intelligence and code so you can see why that is a huge huge asset that people spend a lot of time building um, mm -hmm. a lot of man hours a lot of data scientists involved so you can see why that that is a yeah definitely something that people would be worried about as well as obviously you know data and everything that comes with it being sensitive and whatnot so if someone steals the data it's bad so it's like yeah, but it's sort of like just as bad as a regular data breach but the model so so at first, so you write up this model, but then you train it for a long time and that costs a lot of money? Yeah, so normally what you do is you have um, Python code or R or whatever, and you'll kind of build out a training script. So training is always separate from like testing sort of thing. And when you train it, that's when you're kind of passing it all of your data and probably some kind of label, some kind of answer with that data. Okay. And then that is the process. That is always a part of the process that tends to take much, much longer to do. That's when it's really churning through the data. Um, it might even go across that data multiple times. So they're called epochs, which is a yeah, rather strange word, but it goes across them multiple times. Mm -hmm. So all of this compute power is needed and, mm -hmm. and um, it takes a long time. I mean, like the first, like with any code, right? The first you know, submission or compile that you do with that code isn't always perfect. It's the same thing with machine learning. We iterate constantly on that model to make it even better, to optimize it. So when you do get to something that you're happy that is out there, um, it's probably it's been a, you know, a fair amount of time and, and people's knowledge to kind of get it into there. So really it's, it's intellectual property, I guess. It's something yeah. that has been built by that company on their data potentially you know and, and that's probably what's being very important would you say that um like a really well trained model could be worth like millions of dollars maybe or oh, yeah i oh, i would never want to i don't know how you put a price on something like that right but like any data breach it's terrible for the brand it's you know not mm -hmm. ideal they've spent loads and loads of time um using that data as well to build these models or you know, maybe as well, we're in this, we're in a situation where lots of people, you know, haven't got huge data science teams. So, you know, if someone did do that and you've built out all of this amazing intelligence, you know, that, that maybe one ups you on some of your partners or some of your yeah. competitors, then it would be extremely, you know, damaging almost, I guess, to, to have that removed from you. So. Like potentially even like put you out of business, right? Like if you're a startup and like this is your main thing if and then your thing. competitor steals it and yeah. then adds one thing to it, it's like, why do we need you? I was going to say, like anything, right? Anything that is new, anything that's intellectual property, I can imagine it's yeah, super important to keep those things secure. <laughs> okay, so if hackers are going to try to steal the model, so I would assume they try to steal data the same way they always try to steal data, but the model is of interest to me. Okay. So um, so you were saying 
Can you explain the architecture, like the front end and the API and stuff? Like yeah, sure. So um, I talk a lot about Azure Machine Learning, specifically mm -hmm. Azure Machine Learning Service. And one of the things that we do with Azure Machine Learning is we're kind of trying to apply software engineering principles to machine learning projects, um, which sounds trivial in app development, but in, in machine learning, it's kind of coming out of research so quickly that we need to be a bit more structured about how we're actually bringing these things into production. Um, so now what we're able to do is we're able to bring those data sets into that environment. We can secure all of that environment with uh, key vault keys and the, and same with the compute that we use. So mm -hmm. if the compute is up there for training, it's, you know, often like GPU machines, quite powerful, expensive machines, um, we can make sure that only the people in that team are using that, uh, that compute. And then finally, within the kind of code what you'll do is you'll do this training script and that's obviously you run that and that's where it learns from all of the data but once you're happy with that you actually save off a, a model file so a good example is uh, one of the frameworks is called Keras and um, that saves a .h5 file okay. um, and then in that file is like the architecture of what the model looks like and wow. then potentially the weights that you've trained as well. You, you can split them apart, um, but you know a lot of the time people will save them as is, Together. I can imagine. Yeah. So there's a bit of both, right? You can do both things with the framework. So let's say that I'm a malicious actor <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, I really like Amy's machine learning mm -hmm. thing. And I'm like, ooh, I want to steal it and then do I don't know, whatever malicious people do with these things. <laughs> so then, so could I go, so I, don't, I really don't know very much about machine learning. So would I go to a web page and then I, and then the machine learning thing talks to the web page? How does that work? Um, so when it's consumed, so you've done all this training, you've got this nice little model. Um, when you actually want to put it into production or, it, or it's inside your application or mm -hmm. something like that for people to use, um, you'll, what, what a lot of people are doing in the industry now is hosting it in containers. Okay. Um, so the container will have the model inside it. Well, it will decompile the model, then it will call a run method. Um, and then what you can do is you can call that container via an API, so a REST request. Right? Okay, so does this mean, um, okay, so I'm gonna continue yeah. to deconstruct this. <laughs> Don't worry, it's I'm, okay. I'm literally, I'm nervous. <laughs> Okay, so let's say, so if you have um, a front-end web app, so I can use a proxy yeah. and get in between there, and then I can talk to your API. So yeah, I can it's send like any other API, right? So Okay, so that means all the regular API security would apply. So that means Absolutely. someone could inject um, like code into the API call and potentially try to inject, just like you would inject SQL injection into an SQL database or no SQL into... Yeah you know, um, Mongo or something, yeah. they could theoretically try to inject into your model. And yeah, because that's the kind of part of the um, architecture at the moment that is that is less the data scientists um, More software toolbox. Engineering. Yeah, like we're, we're not super, you know, that's not our area. We're really specialist in what we do. And actually, we need some help in this space. We should be working with people like yourself. So work with your data scientists, please. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's because it's just hosted in a container, right? We're, we're using other parts of technology. I've had to learn a lot about containers, which I didn't know before. So that's been interesting. And so, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Once it's hosted, as with anything, we need to make sure that's all, that is secured from the front end as well, because otherwise all oh, that yeah. great work, right? So. so definitely you would need to make sure containers are have good config. Okay secure settings yeah uh, we could definitely talk to jess frizzelli or yes. jesse frizzell about that no that's she, cool bring everyone in <laughs> oh my gosh yeah she's amazing and then um also we want to make sure that the api has security built into it so okay. it's validating its inputs we want to make sure that it's whoever's calling is authorized and allowed yeah. to call it yeah right? okay this is good okay so i feel like a model would be very valuable mm -hmm and it could be a target for bad people, malicious actors, as we call them. Um, apparently, we're not supposed to say bad guys anymore. OK, so yeah. <laughs> because the women that are bad are like, hey. True, true. It's, it's, it's not, you know. There are, you know, there are. Everyone could potentially have that. <laughs> Um, and so we should make sure we have good container security. We have we follow proper 
software engineering practices, yeah. right? So, yeah. and that includes security testing. Yes. And yeah, I feel like maybe threat modeling. So like threat modeling is like evil brainstorming. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like where you invite someone uh, like me mm. uh, to come in and talk to you about your app and then tell you, well, if I was a bad person, like this is how I would attack you. I see. And then I ask you, yeah. you know, what are you most worried about? Like what is the most precious thing oh. to you or like what keeps you up at night? Like what are you concerned about? And then we go and we try to do those things to your app and make sure it can protect itself. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's awesome. And I guess the the whole part of machine learning, like I said, we're, we're trying to apply these software engineering principles because we're coming out of you know many, many proof of concepts and we want this stuff to be secure and available in production. We want people to be able oh, to use it, right? Yeah. But uh, I think I said to you earlier, I this is my personal opinion, but I always think, um, Machine learning's maybe in that sort of like young adolescent, <laughs> angry teenager, I don't know, stage <laughs> sort of thing, where they kind of kind of just, you know, we do what we want almost. And um, <laughs> we need to just be like pushed in the right direction. We need some yeah. help from our friends in other mm -hmm. areas of technology mm -hmm. to try and figure out actually, how do we make this a much more end-to-end -end process where we can, you know, apply DevOps to it. We can yes. make sure that our models are versioned and all that. And, and that's starting to come in, in the Azure Machine Learning Services specifically, that's like parts of it. But absolutely security is something we need to work together yeah. on. It's, it's not something that I've uh, focused on in the past. So this is this is great. This is good to hear like that we can, yeah. you know, there's definitely places where we can all work together on this. Oh my gosh, I would be excited to collaborate yeah. on this more. Cool. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has thank been super, me. super informative. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that data scientists are like, oh, maybe security matters. Absolutely, absolutely. We and should uh, all work together on this. Yeah, maybe a best practices on mm. uh, like security best practices for machine learning. That would be very cool. That would be very cool. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so this has been the OWASP Dev Slap Show. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you having us. Oh, we both we gotta we both do the silly wave. We both do yeah, the wave. Okay. okay. Bye everyone. <laughs> this has been Amy Boyd. She's fantastic and you should